What's up everyone and welcome to another Envision Gaming review and today we're gonna to be looking at Call of Duty Vanguard and I'm gonna let the boys take over because I know nothing about Call of Duty really so <laughs> other than just the basics of what I see. <laughs> all right so Vanguard released last last week basically across all platforms but Switch but yeah Vanguard it's a World War II first person shooter it, it's Call of Duty through and through. Um, I am playing through the campaign currently. The campaign's phenomenal thus far. Uh, I'm actually surprised by how much I'm enjoying it because I did not think I would based off of the initial like videos they released of it. But they're definitely given some interesting viewpoints on different battles and battles that you don't typically see in video games, as in the Battle of Midway. And I thought it was a pretty interesting episode. They give you a different look at uh, D-Day and some other big battles. I'm not going to spoil anything. But yeah, the game's incredible. Uh, visually, it's outstanding. It's Call of Duty. They never stray away from top of the line visuals in their games. I did get this one on PC and my computer does not like me whenever I'm running it at max settings, but we do it anyway. But yeah, gameplay, it's the same as it's been for the past X amount of years in Call of Duty. Um, controls are all the same. The only real new mechanic they added to this one was the fact that they added like these mini skills that the you know, different player characters could use. So for instance, one of them is like for the commander, you're able to tell units to focus fire on certain areas or move certain things, do certain objectives in a specific orientation. Um, for another character, it's like extremely focused hearing or something. You can kind of like see the outline of characters. It's weird to Call of Duty for me, but it works in its own right, I suppose. And it's, you know, Call of Duty testing the waters for adding something new. If people like it, I'm sure we'll see it in every Call of Duty from this point <laughs> forward. But how, how, uh, how much have you put into the campaign, roughly? Oh, I'm probably between like six and eight missions deep. I don't know hours wise because I kind of was just really enjoying it and lost track of time. Mm -hmm. But it's really fun. I am surprised how much I liked it. I planned on playing it in a similar fashion to Cold Wars campaign where I just played it and got done with it. And I was like, oh, OK, uh, nothing of that was memorable. <laughs> but no, this was definitely one of the better ones, especially in recent history, if not in total. Mm. Yeah, the, I was just curious. The uh, the cutscenes in the campaign are really juicy, and there's actually quite a bit of it, where the campaign estimated online is about five to six hours to complete, and the cutscenes take up like an hour if you were to jam them all together, which is quite impressive. Yeah, the cutscenes are always incredible in Call of Duty, especially as of late. But mm -hmm. even like some of the aesthetics of like. Uh, in the jungle in the Pacific or like in the woods uh, behind D-Day at night and just the lighting is incredible and I don't know it's really standing out to me as opposed to other Call of Duty games I'd say excluding Modern Warfare 2019 because I thought that game was amazing as well and I think that uh, Sledgehammer definitely took this one and ran with the opportunity of going back to World War Two and showing it in a bit of a different light uh they definitely went back to like the gore aspect that we haven't seen since i believe world of war mm -hmm. and that including like blown off limbs and blood and gore in the game yeah so coming coming from a standpoint of i don't play call of duty game stuff here's the thing what always throws me off and kind of what bravo said i know that the games usually aren't very long and they're, you know, primarily multiplayer games in general. Like, I, I believe one of the games didn't even have a single player campaign, if I'm not uh, wrong, right? Kind of recently. I believe it was one of the advanced, like, futuristic ones. Because mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy those, so I didn't play them. Yeah, so to me, like, looking at the game myself, like, I would probably give the game a shot just to play the campaign and stuff. But then I'm kind of like... You know, obviously, being Call of Duty being a $60 game when it comes out, yes, I can wait 
just like kind of we talked about for our last review of Grand Theft Auto, you can wait till the game drops a price, which obviously this will drop at once in one year when the next Call of Duty comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's something I should do because realistically, um, I kind of give Call of Duty crap just because it's Call of Duty. Um, but in reality, they pretty much do the best first-person shooter games out there on the market. They feel the best. They look amazing. They're obviously AAA being the amount of money that they have behind them. Um, and this, the game does look amazing. Well, like I, probably you want to walk us through it. some multiplayer input? Oh, yeah. It's it's lengthy, too. Let me hit you up with some facts, okay? <clears throat> uh, the, the multiplayer doesn't bring very much extra uh, uh, as far as, like, any of the other Call of Duty multiplayers. Like, you, you go in... You shoot them up, and you're done. The only other thing that they've added that I really like is the Champions Hill game mode, which we have a video on if you want to go check it out. It is from it is uh, footage from the beta, but they haven't changed anything uh, since the beta for re regular release. But uh, I really think we could see some uh, pretty cool competitive play with the Champions Hill. It's basically like, a, I don't know how you would describe it, like a round-robin group-style uh combat with the maps are like pretty small and you just fight against other people and, and you have a set amount of lives it's, it's pretty cool the other game and, modes uh, the domination can we describe it as like a hunger games yeah kind of like the hunger games like a team-based hunger games yeah uh there's going without Didn't mean the, to to. without the cool food and crazy outfits uh, well i guess the crazy outfits are coming i guess because it's call of duty so <laughs> You, you, you're bound to be teabagged by a clown eventually, but that's a different thing. Uh, yeah, the, the other game modes are, are standard Call of Duty. Uh, and then we have to talk about the zombies, which Joe and I played. And I got to say, I'm pretty disappointed in the zombies. I don't know if it was just the particular... Maybe game. we didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not like it. They So there's like a hub world... That you you sit in and then you go through different portals to like fight Nazi zombies and and whatnot and like there's demon demon runes and stuff that like you have to pick up and I'm I'm sure if you put ten minutes fifteen minutes into the game mode it will get harder but we breezed through the first five to ten minutes without any kind of a challenge and we're picking up weird items and going back to the hub world it just wasn't fun. I just I just yeah. want to go back to like old school zombie mode. Don't don't try to rewrite, you know, reinvent the wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a step back, talk a little bit more about multiplayer. It's Call of Duty, but it feels like they turned the time to kill back up in uh, normal like core modes. And that's not something I'm very much a fan of. I'm a hardcore style player. I want to shoot somebody once, maybe twice and they're dead. But it feels good. The maps are very diverse. Um, I specifically love the Numa Numa map, which is like the Pacific front uh, smaller version map. And aesthetically, they're all really good. And there's some that uh, have some spawning issues, which is typical <laughs> for Call of Duty. In particular, Dome, a World at War map, got re-added. And you literally will just spawn in like the middle of a square, and there's people everywhere around you. Yep. <laughs> it, it's just like have at it and you spawn dead and then you spawn again and you're dead <laughs> but overall it's call of duty you know what you're getting into at this point um they do take the weird aspect of and i think this is a good thing but they take all these like world war ii guns and let you put like red dot sights on them mm -hmm. and for what call of duty is they're just embracing the archaic arcade style that they excel at and just take them to a whole new level and i don't think it's a bad thing like i think it's yeah. good for multiplayer it's just weird to be running around with like an m1 garand <laughs> with a red dot sight <laughs> and they like they like retro skinned them you know like the the, dot, the dots look uh analog but the, yeah <laughs> yeah uh, we we were making we were kind of pointing fun at them when we first started playing but you really come around to it, you're like okay this is call of duty it's fine. They don't have to be perfectly historically accurate. I mean, just look at my gun. It's painted like a candy cane or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm also like Joe where I prefer the hardcore mode just because 
it's just a little bit more i, I don't want to unload a full clip into somebody and then they kill me that's just not not something i want to do that's so hardcore for me as well but with it being call of duty you know what you're getting Bravo, mm. let's give it a rating. I don't think Brad wants to partake in the rating, but if he does, oh, he's giving welcome. it a rating, all right? Yeah. All right, but it's not getting counted in the final. Uh, Brad, go ahead and give your rating then. Yeah, Brad, go ahead. Uh, a, a 7 out of our 19 scale. Oh, okay. okay. Nice. Bravo. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, I'm going to I'm going to be pretty harsh. I'm going to I'm going to give it uh probably a, a six and a half out of ten because i really do think this probably should have just been an expansion that was half the price and just give the game modes to warzone or you know compile them into the to the the one launcher or something i think asking 60 bucks for this is kind of kind of ridiculous because it doesn't really give anything extra beyond the uh the campaign and and the new game mode champions hill <clears throat> i'm not gonna be as harsh and i'm actually surprisingly gonna disagree i feel like this is one of the first call of duties excluding modern warfare 2019 that's actually worth a full price tag and it could be because i'm deep into the campaign bravo hasn't got very much into it if at all at this point but I'm a campaign player. I play multiplayer, sure, but it's definitely not a focus point for me. So I come and give this game, uh, I'm gonna give it an eight. I think zombies struggles, which I typically do like to play me some zombies, but I realistically haven't enjoyed them since like Black Ops. So it's nothing new for me to be disappointed with those. Uh, multiplayer, the guns feel good. Um, I am a World War II fan in general when it comes to video games. Yeah, I'm just a World War II fan. I love when the world goes crazy on each other. But... I love when I have to panic. <laughs> <laughs> love it. When I, that the world's going to end. Yeah. Favorite. <laughs> but the game's good. It's, it's a good Call of Duty. Um, I'm honestly shocked because from the pre-release videos and footage that was seen, I was probably given this game about a four. <laughs> but it it honestly really surprised me and i'm glad i ended up picking it up i'll have to play through the campaign maybe uh, boost my score a little bit but there you go the the envision gaming average about seven out of ten um if joe or brad doesn't have anything else to include that's our review review for <laughs> the for call of duty vanguard uh drop a follow drop a like uh, drop a comment and uh, we'll see you next time.